Hey, welcome to The Feast Life, where we empower you, the modern homeschool mom, to create a life in homeschool you love. I'm Julie Ross, the creator of the award-winning curriculum, A Gentle Feast, a homeschool veteran of over 20 years, and a certified Christian life coach. Charlotte Mason said, life should be all living, not a mere tedious passing of time. So on this show, we seek to savor the feast of life. So go get your favorite beverage and pull up a chair. You're welcome at this table. Hello, welcome to The Feast Life. Julie Ross here, and today I'm going to be chatting with you about silencing your inner critic with self-compassion. So self-compassion is basically showing yourself the same kindness and understanding that you would show someone else in difficult circumstances. We are so good at nurturing and caring for others, but we often neglect to care and nurture for ourselves. And part of showing yourself self-compassion is learning to silence that little voice in your head that is constantly telling you all the things that you've done wrong. And see, I told you you couldn't do it. See, I told you you were a bad mom. See, you're such a failure. Oh my goodness, you're totally screwing up your children. And all those thoughts that we have on a regular basis that are not serving us. I used to think that if I showed myself kindness and understanding, if I silenced my inner critic, that I would just become lazy, that I would just like watch Netflix all day and give my kids cereal for dinner. And it, I just kind of saw it as like this, like everybody gets a participation trophy kind of thing and like, oh, it's okay that you didn't do that. And it's okay that you totally screwed that up, Julie, and didn't think that self-compassion would motivate me that I needed that inner critic to be like the drive like I was the horse and the inner critic was the whip and I needed that whip in order to keep going and keep doing and keep achieving in my life and so when I first heard this concept of self-compassion I was like oh my goodness that's like so snowflake fluffy and there's no way that me being kind to myself is actually going to be able make it able for me to get anything done I will be so unproductive if I'm kind to myself But research has shown that the opposite is actually true. When we can speak words of kindness to ourselves, when we can help ourselves feel seen and heard and understood, we are actually more productive. It actually motivates us to do more. We're not driven from a place of fear and anxiety and stress. We're motivated by a place of confidence and joy and we're actually able to get a lot more done. Now, our inner critic has been around for a while. If you start to notice the thoughts that you tell yourself about yourself, it might sound an awful lot like some other people in your life. Those voices that we've heard throughout our lives become part of our identity and part of who we are. Our brains are habitual. Our brains look for the negative. Research shows that we have between 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts per day, 85% of which are negative and 90% of which are repetitive. The more we think a thought, the stronger that neural pathway becomes in our brain. And our inner critic has been telling us these thoughts for a very long time. And so first we need to be aware of what we're even saying to ourselves (laughs) and then start to question that. So I want you to picture the next time something goes wrong in your day. And you're like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe that this happened. I'm such a hot mess. I knew I couldn't do this. I'm not smart enough, organized enough, good enough, kind enough, patient enough. Oh, my kid's resisting school. I'm a complete failure as a homeschool mom. Whatever those thoughts that come up throughout your day, I want you to pause. Again, we live such rushed lives and such busy lives, we never take the time to actually think about these things, so pause. And then I want you to picture yourself holding that thought in your hand and ask yourself this question. Is this thought serving me? I've heard people say, ask yourself the question, like, is this thought true? But that didn't work for me because I was like, oh yeah, it's true, I'm a complete failure. And then let me tell you the 75 reasons just today of why I'm a failure. I could prove anything true. And Charlotte Mason even says that our brains will prove to itself whatever we tell it. (laughs) And so we need to not just say, is this thought true? But 
keep it in your hand and go, is this thought serving me? Is me believing that I am a complete hot mess, I'm a failure, I'm not smart enough, I'm not doing anything right, is that actually serving me? Does that actually make me want to try to do something different? Most likely the answer is gonna be no, right? If it's me and I'm thinking that thought, I wanna go like hide in my bed. <laughs> I wanna like, okay kids, we're all done with school for today, it's over. That thought isn't helping. It's not serving me. And so I'm not going to listen to that inner critic anymore. I'm going to tell what my inner critic what to think instead. And here are some compassionate thoughts that you might wanna try. I'm growing and learning every day. It's normal to struggle sometimes. I'm not a failure, I'm just having a hard time right now. It won't always be this way. It's good to rest. I'm allowed to have needs. A messy house doesn't make me a bad mom. I will give myself grace. Part of self-compassion is realizing the common humanity. We are all humans. <laughs> I know this might not come shocking to you, but human beings are not perfect. We're not expected to be perfect. We're humans. We're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna fail. We're gonna fall down and get back up a million times. That's part of the human experience. The other part of being a human is you're going to have the full range of human emotions. Life is not going to be all sunshine rainbows and we're, we're gonna be happy all the time. Life is 50-50. We're gonna have emotions that feel good and we're gonna have emotions that don't feel good. That's part of being human. So rather than judge those emotions, which is something I used to do like, Oh my goodness, I cannot believe I am sad right now. I should totally not be sad about that. That wasn't that big a deal. Get over yourself, Julie. And I would judge myself for feeling my feelings. Let me tell you what doesn't make you feel any better. <laughs> it's judging yourself for feeling. Rather, self-compassion means recognizing the fact that we're all humans. Oh, it makes sense that I would feel sad because X, Y, Z happened. Oh. Yeah, I'm human. It makes complete sense that I would feel disappointed that that thing didn't happen the way I wanted it to. Oh yeah, it makes complete sense that I would feel annoyed when that person cut me off in traffic and now I'm gonna be late for this event. Rather than judging our feelings and criticizing ourselves, which only makes us feel worse and show up in a way that we don't want because now we're filled with shame and guilt, allow yourself to be a human and to feel your feelings. We can be so scared of our emotions <laughs> Our emotions are just energy. They're just electrical impulses through our body. Emotions, energy, emotion. And rather than judging ourselves or trying to push away our feelings, again, the common humanity aspect, we can just recognize, yes, it makes sense that I'm having these feelings. And then we can allow and accept them rather than judging them and trying to numb them away. When we're not allowed to have feelings and we are criticizing ourselves for the emotions that we have, we try to numb and escape those emotions as soon as possible because we don't like to sit in them. We might numb out our emotions by scrolling on Instagram or going and eating some cookies or going and doing some online shopping or calling a friend and gossiping or we might lash out at our kids or whatever as a way to get rid of the feeling that's inside of us. We don't wanna sit in it. When we can allow it and say, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really bummed right now. I'm feeling really annoyed with about that. And I still love myself. I'm still okay. I'm safe to have these feelings. What happens is it's like a wave. It'll come, it'll feel really, really big, but then it will pass. The more we try to bottle our feelings and suppress our feelings and minimize them and pretend they're not there, the, you know, kind of like trying to stuff too many things in a trunk and then it explodes and it comes out in ways we don't want it to. So we need to learn to accept and allow our feelings instead of judging and numbing them and hoping they're just gonna go away. Today's episode is brought to you by A Gentle Feast. A Gentle Feast offers a complete living books curriculum, an award-winning early reading program, and more tools to equip you to apply Charlotte Mason's timeless philosophy into your modern homeschool. Go to agentlefeast.com to check it out. Smooth and easy days are closer than you think. In order to have self compassion, when we have self compassion, we are able to show more compassion and empathy towards other people. 
If you find yourself being critical and judging other people, most likely you're criticizing and judging yourself. I have seen how when I have learned to accept my humanity, my emotions, good, bad, when I have learned to take the thoughts of my inner critic and question them, when I am able to love myself and show empathy and understanding and kindness to myself, I am then able to show that to other people. And research has shown this. The people who have the best relationships are people who are able to show self-compassion to themselves because it allows them to hold space and compassion for the people in their lives. So this is a gift that you're not, it's not selfish. It's not just something you're giving to yourself. When you're silencing your inner critic with self-compassion, it allows you to love and have more empathy and connection with the people in your life. Another aspect of self-compassion is self-kindness. It's just really being kind to yourself. Like, how would you treat a friend in this situation? How would you treat you're one of your children in this situation. We say things to ourselves we would never let anybody say to our children. We would never allow somebody to say that about somebody we love, but we say it to ourselves all the time. Why do we allow ourselves to treat ourselves so badly? <sighs> Show yourself some kindness. What do you need? I'm gonna ask that question again. When was the last time you asked yourself, what do I need right now? When you're having a bad day, when you're upset about something, have you ever just stopped to ask yourself, like, what would feel good right now? Like, what do I need? How can I soothe myself? You know, our ch child files off their bike and we're running out into the road and we're giving them a hug and we're wiping away their tears and we're putting a bandaid on their boo-boo when we're coming in and we're getting some ice. Like, we're so good about responding to other people's needs. But when we have difficult things going on in our lives and we go, Oh, I'm feeling all these emotions. I'm feeling really upset. I'm criticizing myself. What do I need? When I asked that question, I didn't know what I need. I didn't know what felt good. I didn't know what was soothing to myself. And so that might be trying things, you know, just even taking a breath. We don't feel like we're even allowed to breathe sometimes. <laughs> you are worthy as a human being created by God to rest. God himself rested. But we think we need to earn rest. Okay, when the, the house is clean and all the dishes are done and we've checked off all the lesson plans for today and all my kids, you know, did all their work without complaining. Okay, now I'm allowed to have rest. When you operate from that, you are going to be constantly frustrated and resentful with the people in your life. It's not up to them. It's not up to your circumstances to allow you to rest. You are inherently worthy of rest just because God made you and you are who you are and you're allowed to take some time for what you need. That might be, oh, I'm feeling really upset. This lesson didn't really go well. The kids are fighting. I need to go in the bathroom for five minutes and just cry or just give myself a big hug or put my hand on my heart or take a break. I might need to go walk around the block a couple times. Ask yourself, what do I need right now? Part of showing kindness to yourself is asking for help. You are allowed to have needs because you are a human being. You do not have to do everything yourself. It was so eye-opening for me to realize that when I don't allow other people to help me, I am hurting them. I used to think asking for help was selfish. And then I realized, no, if I don't accept someone's help, I'm hurting them. What do I mean by that? When someone asks to help you and you say no, you're cutting off the gift that it would be for them in order to help you. People want to show you love. They wanna give you this gift of their time, their help, their assistance, whatever it is. And by you saying no, you're cutting that off. You're depriving them the joy that comes from giving and helping somebody else. Also with your children, if they're not helping, like you're robbing them of like super important life skills that they're gonna need someday. <laughs> they're gonna need to have, know how to take care of themselves and not expect other people to do it. So you need to ask for help and to ask for what you need. You're allowed to need things. The other way that you can show yourself kindness is by celebrating your wins, looking for the things that are good. 
it's so easy for our brains to find all the things that are going wrong and all the things that are need to be fixed and all the problems in our lives and in our homeschool. If I bet if I asked you right now, what's one thing that's going wrong, you could tell me in three seconds. But if I asked you, what's something that's good that happened in the last 24 hours? I mean, seriously, answer me. <laughs> what's something good that happened in the last 24 hours? What are you proud of? What brought you joy? It's probably a lot harder to think of it, isn't it? Our brains naturally look for the negative. Remember, 85% of our thoughts are negative. <laughs> they naturally want to keep us safe, so they're going to look for things that are wrong. We have to train our brains to find the good. So start to celebrate your wins. At the end of the day, ask your kids, you know, what went well for you today? Start to cultivate that habit of showing kindness to yourself. And it will definitely change the atmosphere of your home. When we are critical to ourselves, it feels comfortable. Our brains are used to hearing our inner critic. When we turn down the volume on that inner critic, when we silence it and say, you know what? I'm not listening to this anymore. I know you have been around for a long time. I know you're trying to keep me safe, but I'm not listening to this anymore. I'm not believing these things. It's going to feel uncomfortable because our brains have always gone down that neural pathway and we're asking it to do something different. So I want you to know that by silencing your inner critic, your brain might totally freak out. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> She's not listening to me anymore. And just be okay with that resistance and know that that's part of it. And as you start to speak kindly to yourself, it is going to feel weird because you're not used to talking to yourself that way. You're not used to giving yourself grace and telling yourself that, oh, it's okay that you made that mistake. We're growing and learning. Oh, it's okay that you're having that feeling. You're, you're human. Humans have these feelings. Your brain is going to put up all kinds of resistance and be like, no, no, we don't want to think those things. That's like, we're going to be like so lazy and unmotivated. Don't go, don't think that. And you need to expect that resistance and keep going anyway. Because the more that you can allow yourself to feel kindness and understanding and empathy towards yourself, it will change your relationships. You will show up with your cup more full and that will create a more peaceful atmosphere in your home. You'll be able to show up with more joy and more confidence. And because you are asking for help and sharing your needs, you will actually have more time to fill your cup and to rest and to do the things that matter to you. So when you build these habits of self-compassion and you silence your inner critic, not only will your relationships improve, but you'll be setting a positive example for your children. They will see a version of a mom that is vibrant, forgiving, loving, understanding, confident, filled with joy, instead of a mom that's filled with guilt, fear, and burnout. We don't want to put that example for our children. When you start to show yourself compassion, you are modeling that for your children so that someday when they're going through a difficult experience, they can show themselves compassion. You'll start to hear your children criticizing themselves. You'll start to see their inner critic at work. And by allowing yourself to be kind to yourself, modeling that for your children and turning off your inner critic, they're going to be able to build that skill, which most of us never had. We never had that modeled for us, right? We had a model of most likely someone who was critical and that created that inner critic within us. And we can change that for our children. We could show them, oh yeah, you, you, you didn't get that problem right? Well, yeah, but you got these four problems. That's really awesome, good job today. Or yeah, th that problem looks really hard. I don't even know if I could do that problem. Like, yeah, like learning new things, that's tough. And we can start to have empathy for our children and then our children will start to have that understanding for themselves and be able to show themselves love even in difficult circumstances. So if you're struggling with how you're talking to yourself and struggling with turning off that voice of your inner critic, here's a really simple practice you can do. I want you to find a picture of yourself when you're a child. And next time you start to tell yourself, see, I told you you couldn't do it. I told you you're a horrible mom. I told you you're a failure. I told you you're screwing up your kids. I told you you couldn't do this. You're not smart enough. You're not organized enough. You don't keep a clean house, blah, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> I want you to get out that picture. And I want you to say those things to you when you were younger. Most likely, it's going to be challenging and you won't be able to do it because that child doesn't deserve to be talked to that way. 
that child should be treated with kindness. You're going to think that, which is true. And that child is still you. <laughs> you deserve to be spoken to with kindness and understanding. And so even ask yourself that if you don't want to get the whole picture and do this whole exercise, but just ask yourself like, what would a younger version of me need right now? How would I want to talk to the younger version of me when they made a mistake or they failed or they felt misunderstood or they were sad or disappointed? What would you have told yourself back then? And start to say those things to yourself today and see how it changes you and how it changes your relationships. All right, everyone, until next time, remember life's a feast. Let's savor it. Thanks for listening. Hey, 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 thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, please heart it down below and make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. Leave a comment and let me know what you learned in today's episode. I'd love to hear from you.